Hi folks, today we're going to talk about symmetry. So symmetry has multiple operations. Um, we're going to talk about rotational symmetry today. Okay, so you can see a few um, minerals that are sitting here off to the side and you can see that these minerals have different shapes or morphologies to them. And those shapes are, of course, made up of the different faces. So uh, we can use the arrangement of the faces or the symmetry at which the faces exist to um, characterize crystal um, uh, forms and um, relationships. And of course, this is all part of the uh, characteristic of a mineral having an arranged uh, uh, an arrangement of um, atoms that are very specific to that mineral. Okay, so if we want to look at rotational symmetry, then what we can do is use some models that have um, nice symmetry, um, not necessarily the symmetry of something that was grown in nature, but something that represents that. So it's like the perfect version of what would grow in nature. Okay, so if we're gonna start with a model, we can start with something relatively simple. And what we want to do when we're looking at rotational symmetry is as we rotate the model or the crystal, uh, we want to know how many times the same pattern appears as that model is rotated 360 degrees. So the pattern that we're looking at here could be this um, wide rectangle, okay? That pattern has a specific term and that is called the motif, okay? So we're going to rotate this model and see how many times this wide rectangle appears um, in 360 degrees rotation. So we know that an axis is a line and so we're going to imagine that my pencil is a line that goes um, through the bottom of the model through the very center point in the middle of the model and then out the other side, okay? So that's going to be our axis. So it's the axis um, uh, moves from the top of the model through the center and then out the bottom. So I'm gonna hold my fingers. My fingertips are now the axis, okay? So let's see here, I put a pink square on the top of the model and we have this wide rectangle. We're going to see how many times we see that wide rectangle, which is our motif, um, with 360 degrees rotation. So the pink uh, paper just tells me where I started. Okay, so I see that motif one time. I do not see the same motif now. Um, I see a skinny rectangle. There's my starting um, rectangle motif. So I've seen it now twice and I continue to rotate, that's not it again, and now I'm back at the beginning. So what I've seen is that this motif appears two times. So I can note that as two-fold rotational symmetry, okay? So two-fold rotation. Um, and really what we have is we're talking about this axis as having two-fold rotation. So what I've found here with my fingertips is an axis of two-fold rotation, and we note that with a capital A for axis and a subscript two for two-fold rotation, okay? So we've checked the um, long direction. Now, I would not want to simply uh, let go of the model, flip it around, and count my motifs again, because this is the same axis that I did before. It's just upside down version, right? So we need to look for different axes. Well, we know that there's another axis um, perpendicular to the first one, and that's shown with my fingertips here. So we can rotate it, we see this motif. Okay, we rotate it, we've seen it one time, nope. There's the second time we've seen it. We keep rotating it, nope. And now we're back to the beginning. So again, we've seen the same motif two times. So we can note this as another A2, okay? So that's a second one. So we've looked at this axis originally, this axis next. Notice that there's another axis going right through the pink paper, okay? 
So now we can, I'm just going to rotate my hand, and now we can use this um, shorter rectangle as our motif. I see it one time. That's a different motif. That's the original motif, so that's second. That's something else. And now I'm back to beginning. So I've seen the same motif again two times. So I have another twofold rotational axis. So I can note this as three A twos, okay? Now that was looking for axes on the faces. And what we want to do is find all the axes um, of the block. And let me just slide my paper over here. Um, and so we can look at the faces. We could also look at edges because we can have an axis go from this top edge to this bottom edge through the center of the block, okay? But even though that's an axis, is it a rotational axis? Well, we see this motif of the um, wide rectangle with a, um, the shorter rectangle below it. Let's see if we see that same motif again. We don't see it, we don't see it. Now we see the wide rectangle and the short rectangle, but it's on the top. So that's not an exact rotational axis, okay? Um, that's not the same exact motif. So we get back to the beginning and we've only seen our original motif one time. So this is one fold rotation, but really anything is one fold rotation. So we don't take note of it, okay? So um, we've checked this set of edges. We can check other sets of edges more sets of edges, more sets of edges. So we just want to make sure we do our due diligence and look for all the sets of edges where we could find an axis, okay? And the other place where we can find axes is through the corners. So I'm on the top right corner of my original motif, and I'm on the underside of the block here um, where my axis would come out my fingers and go through the center of the block. So again, we're looking for that rotational symmetry. We don't see the exact motif more than once. So this is yet another one-fold rotational axis, which we don't really care about. So we're not even going to report it, okay? So we can um, check all these sets of axes and um, see how many rotational axes that we have. And then we can report that with our notation. Okay, so that's one type of model. Another um, model would be um, something like this, okay? So I can um, show you all around this model, and you'll notice that in this model, I have a motif of a rectangle here with a triangle or pyramid on the top and the bottom, okay? So that's my motif, and let's start with the sample number so that we know where we started. I'm going to test the corners or the points of this, and I'm looking for that motif, the rectangle with the triangle on the bottom and on the top. I see that motif one time, two times, three times, four times, five times, six times, and here we are back to the beginning. So this would be a six-fold rotation, and as you probably guessed, the nomenclature would be a capital A with a six, okay? So I've tested the point. I can try other corners um, of the block where my axis would go through the center point of the block. I can try the faces. I can try the um, pyramid faces. I can also try the rectangle faces, okay? So let's try this one with, a, with the um, six, okay? So it's a vertical axis the way I'm holding it now and I see two rectangles and a triangle or two triangles on either side. So as I rotate it, now I'm turning it that way. That is not the same motif, but look, that is, okay? So that's the second time I've seen it. That is not a repeat, and this is back at the beginning. So I've also found an A2, okay? So now I need to test all of the faces. So I'm gonna test this set, the axis that goes through that set of faces. I'm going to test the axis that goes through this set of faces with the opposite there. And I'm also going to test this set of faces. 
Okay, and what I'm going to find is that there are multiple axes of rotation here. So that's the, fa the faces that I've tested and the corners that I've tested. I also want to test the edges. So the edge is the intersection of two faces. So I have a face here and an axis goes down through the direct center of the block um, by uh, tapping on or putting the end of the axis um, at the bottom uh, opposite edge of the top one. Okay, so now I have one rectangle with my two uh, uh, right and left facing triangles. Okay, I rotate it. No, ah, there's the same motif. Okay, I rotate it again. Ah, there I am back at the beginning. So I've found another A2 on this block. Okay, so I need to go through all the faces. In fact, let's write that down. All the faces, all the edges, and all the corners or points to look for these axes. And I keep a running tally of all of them. Now I haven't finished this block because we haven't tested all the edges and all the corners and all the faces, but at least you get the idea. Okay, so um, we can have in nature minerals exist with um, twofold rotational axes. And we saw that with the original model, and that is A2. We can have threefold rotational axes, and that would be something like this, where we have an axis going um, straight up and down. Oops, sorry, straight up and down the way I'm holding it. And so we can rotate it. So my fingers are now the axis, and I see a rectangle, and I see it one time, two times, three times, and now I'm back at the beginning. So that would be threefold rotation, which is an A3. We can have fourfold rotational axes. So in this example, my fingertips are the axes. This is the starting point. I see a square and I see it one time, two, three, four, and we're back at the beginning. So that is a fourfold rotational axis. And that is an A4. And then uh, remember this model is the one that had um, the sixfold rotation and that is the A6. So those are the ones that occur in nature for minerals, okay? So if you find something else, if you find an A8, then you've um, uh, gone a little bit off. So make sure that all of your rotational axes are um, truly one of these options. Okay, so that is rotational symmetry um, in a nutshell. So uh, I want to introduce myself. I am Rachel Teasdale. I teach mineralogy and lithology at California State University Chico here in Northern California. And while I'm not a mineralogist, I am a geologist, in fact, a volcanologist. I study lava flows and I use minerals in my research by melting uh, pieces of lava in a furnace. And then I cool the molten material at controlled rates to try to better understand how crystallization occurs in a lava flow. So while I'm not a mineralogist, there are lots of people who use minerals in lots of different ways. So I hope you enjoy your mineralogy course. <laughs>